hello beautiful people welcome back to the canada info channel my name is wolo i am a regulated canadian immigration consultant i am based in new brunswick canada i used to live in manitoba i want to say thank you to all of my old subscribers and all new subscribers if you're new please click the subscribe button and give me the thumbs up and you'll be getting updates on anything concerning immigration because this is what I talk about on this channel, immigration to Canada, life in Canada, and hopefully in the future, immigration to any other country. Today's video is not the typical video I used to create where I show my face. This is just a voiceover and I want to pass this message across to anyone that will find it useful. So today's video is a continuation of the topic I have been talking about in my last two videos, which is 2.8 million temporary residents versus 485,000 permanent resident slots. And if you don't know, the people that make up the 2.8 million temporary residents are international students, people on work permit, people on visiting visa status, people who claimed refugee and asylum, and then people who no longer have status who are in Canada as well. So because the government is planning to reduce these 2.8 million temporary residents, they have come up with lots of strategies, and one of them includes enforcing deportation others it's just that you don't find lots of deportation news but a lot of deportation is going on and i'll be sharing a story of a nigerian family whose husband was detained because they had given them a deportation order because they failed their asylum claim having arrived canada since 2017 and have lived in canada for seven years i'll be putting the details on the screen and the link to the article in the description box of this video so that you can read it in your spare time so the long and short of it is that Canada is actually enforcing deportation of failed refugee and asylum claimants and I really want to warn people that claiming asylum is actually not an easy route. It is emotionally and financially draining on the long run even if you get a temporary work permit to actually work and live in Canada while the asylum claim is being processed. A lot of people who came into Canada from the US via the Roxham Road claiming asylum use the same narrative which Canada has deemed is not a basis for claiming asylum especially if they don't have enough evidence sadly this nigerian family is actually one of these people who used the same story of female genital mutilation as the basis of for claiming asylum uh, which was not accepted and are now facing deportation after living in canada for seven years and having children who are canadian citizens including owning a property in ottawa yet they are being deported so one will think that having Canadian children will give them an opportunity to stay in Canada after applying for permanent residence under the humanitarian and compassionate ground. But sadly, this is not the case here because um, the Immigration and Refugees Board did not accept their initial story. Therefore, their application for H and C or application for permanent residence under H&C is not also being accepted as well. So the Canada Border Service Agency um which is the government agency that is responsible for enforcing deportation orders has recently started giving people short notice for their deportation and the reason why they are doing this is because a lot of people once they get that deportation order they go under when i mean go under they become like they just hide they don't the the, the government is not able to find them to deport them so the reason why this story is getting to the news is because this family were invited and normally if you have if they have given you a deportation order they will invite you to the cbsc to be reported to the cbsc once in a week or twice in a week and this family was invited to the cbsc for their usual reports before deportation and during the process of interviewing them for deportation the cbsc discovered that the family had not even started making plans of leaving canada of course they would be looking for other means to stay but once the cbsa discovers that you're not planning to leave canada they would detain you so that's what actually happened to this family so they discovered that the family was not planning to leave canada because the family was supposed to have put their home up for sale and sell their properties in preparation for deportation and since the family had not done so the cbsa had to detain the the man the man of the house um so that they can enforce the deportation of this family now the whole sense of me bringing this story here is just to warn people 
that um, it's not good to join the bandwagon of claiming asylum because there are other legal pathways to actually gain status. Most asylum claimants spend lots of money fighting legal battles just to have a stay in Canada, and this is not the best route to becoming a permanent resident because at the end of the day, it's an emotional and financial draining venture. And then I want to also let you know that recently CBSA has been sending Indians and Nigerians with visiting visas back from the Montreal airport. If any first time visitor to Canada, the CBSA is not allowing them enter into Canada, especially if they find discrepancies in the information that they have provided during the visa application versus the interview at the port of entry. So the CBSA officers would ask, typically ask them to go back to their country of origin or claim asylum those are the two options they are giving them now this is very tricky it's quite tricky especially for those who are coming to canada for the first time who do not have the intention of claiming asylum imagine you just getting your visiting visa you want to explore and because you don't know the details of your visa application because it was um you gave it to an agent to apply for you and you didn't ask the agent to share the documents with you and then you get to the airport uh the port of entry in montreal and the, border officers are asking you questions and you don't know all those details and they are now telling you to go back of course you will not be happy you don't want to go back to your country asking someone who has spent a lot on a visa application and a flight ticket to go back to their country of origin or giving them the option to claim asylum as the only means of entering canada is a trap that will lead to future deportation especially since they do not have any basis to claim asylum what I would advise is for future first-time visitors who do not have the intention of claiming asylum to know the details of their visiting visa application and avoid the Montreal airport. Claiming asylum at the port of entry when you are not prepared to claim asylum leaves you with no option but to come up with untenable stories that will not be acceptable by the Immigration and Refugee Board on the long run or you choose the option of going back to your country of origin if you don't want to fall into that trap. Just this last week alone, 40 Indians and some Nigerians were not allowed to enter Canada because those Indians and Nigerians did not want to claim asylum, while those who wanted to claim asylum were allowed into Canada. One has to be very careful. So this is information I decided I will share today to keep you informed about immigration events in Canada. Thank you so much for listening and see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Canada, oh Canada, come together. Oh Canada, oh Canada, oh Canada.